So now we can change the epsilon and we can thereby dial between a player that absolutely optimizes value, always takes the best step for them and a random player that always chooses a random step. And thereby we now have something with which we can dial that. Effectively, it's an exploration versus exploitation trade-off. If I have a large epsilon, the system will explore all kinds of different games. If I make epsilon be very small, it will effectively exploit. It will do the optimal actions for it. And now that we have a playing agent, we can generate training data by self-play. We, we will have a list of board positions that we saw and we will have the respective end result, which is who won. And now effectively we have a machine learning system that wants to take that position and converts it into an estimate of value so that that estimate of value is similar to the respective end result. Just as a reminder, one if I win, minus one if I lose, zero if I draw. And this is now a quintessential problem for neural networks. So let's look at how code to do such a thing looks like. So we first need to set up a layer and then we need to define the computation or like we will need to set up a network, a neural network, and then we will need to define the computation in that. So let's look at the initialization here. We have a couple of parameters, then we will have two convolution layers. We will learn a lot more about convolution layers later in the course, but the idea is there are aspects of the board that are local and these local aspects can be extracted by local filters and we can, but the meaning of these local motifs will be the same regardless of where it is. Therefore, we can apply the same computation to many locations on the board. So we will have two convolution layers and we have two linear layers here. And then we have the so-called forward computation. What do we have there? We take the board, we run a convolution layer on it. With the ReLU nonlinearity, we do another convolution with the ReLU nonlinearity. And then ultimately we have a fully connected network at the end. And we will return then the tanch of the value that we have there. So this fully specifies the network that defines value here. Now, all the, there's so many aspects in there. Every line here is really valuable and interesting. And we will touch a lot on the ideas here. We'll talk about linear networks in week two. We'll talk about these nonlinear transfer functions. For example, ReLU in week three. We will talk about convolution in week six in the context of computer vision.